Welcome. I assume you clicked on this video because you really like to complain about Artificer's campaign being too difficult, or you just suck at the game, or you're just bored and decide to click on this video. Well, either way, I got you covered. This guide is divided into four chapters. Firstly, I will talk about the scavenger biology and behavior, then Artificer biology, weapons and allies, and lastly, strategies. For the more experienced Artificers out there, you can skip one or two of these chapters though I still strongly encourage you to not do that. There might be some things you didn't know. And remember, all the mods and timestamps will be in the description. With that out of the way, let's begin. Scavengers are social creatures, meaning they like to hang out with each other, which is why you will rarely see one scavenger just walking around. They carry more spears than you, have more HP than you, have a wider throw angle, and there's a bunch more of them. It may seem the cards are stacked against you, but remember, you have something that they don't. Something that evens these forces out. Knowledge and experience. There are three different types of scavengers. The regular scavengers, which make up the bulk of their population and are not special in any way. The lead scavengers that have a vulture mask, electric spears, and can leap. And then we have the scavenger king, who we're going to talk about later. Scavengers are composed of two body parts, their body and their head. If you hit a scavenger's head with a spear, it will instantly kill them. Anywhere else will only damage them, and that could be a problem. You see, you might think that you have killed the scavenger, not knowing that you only injured him. An alive scavenger is still a scavenger. He can still move around and throw spears back at you, so always make sure that you have killed him. Scavengers also have a reaction time, so to say. Basically, once you enter his line of sight, he will raise his spear and after about a second, he will throw it. But there is something that bypasses it. Let's just say there's a vulture that they are fighting. The scavenger that you want to take out is on the other side. He is distracted and does not know your location. What you need to do is just stand up and throw the spear. Okay, you stand up and he immediately kills you. Why did this happen? You see, he was already fighting a vulture. He had his spear raised the whole time. It does not matter if he knew about your location or not. It does not matter if you barely even showed yourself. Once his spear was raised, he was ready to throw it at anything that moves. Keep in mind, out of all the creatures, you will be their target number one. Now, onto the elite scavengers. Without mentioning the fact that they can leap very far distances, the lead scavengers have an even wider throw angle, a sharper reaction time and more health. They are very dangerous and should be either taken care of as fast as possible or completely avoided. To combat them, I recommend using pipes or luring them into tight spaces where they cannot jump a lot. If you succeed in taking one out, you will be rewarded with a cooler vulture mask and an electric spear. Electric spears at least in my opinion, are only useful when taking out large creatures such as vultures. But since you would already have a vulture mask, the electric spear would be basically useless. There isn't much said about the elites, they're just regular scavengers that can jump around. Now, the scavenger king. A scavenger king sits on his throne in Metropolis and acts as a final boss fight for the Artificer campaign. He shares the same stats as the elite scavenger, except he has armor plates and more health. Imagine an elite scavenger and the red centipede having a baby. If the king scavenger can survive a maximum of 8 hits before he dies. 4 of these hits will be deflected by the armor plates. If you hit one of his plates, he will not be phased by it, and it will not stun him. Also, it doesn't matter if he was hit by a grenade, if he was hit by an explosive spear, it will always only remove one plate. So I suggest using the regular spear for close range combat and use grenades for long range combat while he still has his plates on. During the boss fight he can sometimes bug out and do absolutely nothing or just walk around. That's about all. Again, there isn't much said about them, I mean, this time it's just a leak schedule with extra lives. For the absolute morons out there, Artificer is the slug that you play as in the Artificer campaign. 
shocking, right? Anyways, the joke is that the Artificer is able to stun, or in other words, shock. Artificer can take spears out of walls. Cannot swim, so it is advised to avoid areas that have a lot of water. And she can maul enemies. More on the mauling in the next part. The Artificer has multiple trinks up her sleeve. She is immune to explosives and can propel herself through the air, stun enemies, and craft items. Because of these abilities, Artificer is one of the, if not the strongest slugcat in the game. Firstly, I will talk about Explosive Jump and the Concussive Blast. The Explosive Jump is performed by being mid-air, pressing Jump, any directional kicks up or down, and grab all at the same time. It uses up one charge every time. Charges those ability uses, that's what I call them. You can use up 6 charges before being stunned and up to 9 charges before death. Explosive jump should be used only for traversing, escaping dangerous situations, and getting to advantageous positions. When Artificer is performing the explosive jump, she does a backflip, which works as a double-edged sword. The good thing is, she can throw spears upwards and downwards. In some cases, this is better than a regular backflip because you can perform it without moving, being on poles, or swimming in water. Not really sure why would you even be fighting in water, but... Okay, a bad thing is that you can jump too high, bumping your head on the ceiling, basically wasting a charge. The concussive blast is performed by pressing jump, down and grab at the same time. Can you notice the problem? That's right, it's about the grabbing part. While performing the move, you can accidentally grab a corpse, wasting your precious time. The Concussive Blast can stun enemies up to 2 seconds. Keep in mind that the Concussive Blast uses up 1.5 charges, meaning you will be stunned after 4 blasts and, and killed after 7 blasts. You should always use the Concussive Blast in combat or to deflect spears. By the way, did I tell you you can perform the Concussive Blast mid-air? Also kinda works as a double jump. Just try it. Trust me, it, you'll see. I strongly advise using the Concussive Blast mid-air, because it negates the downside of grabbing a scavenger corpse. Though, while jumping you also expose yourself, making you an easy target for any scavenger in the distance. Onto the craftable items, and well, there just isn't much said about them. Sure, you can turn normal spears into explosive ones and rocks into grenades. What most people don't know, though, is that you can turn bad flight lures into cherry bombs and flare bombs into lanterns. That's all. That's pretty much it. That I told I told you there isn't much. To right. Anyways, another thing I don't see people use or talk about is using corpses as cover. All you need to do is kill one scavenger, walk up to it, and crouch. That's all. That counts as taking cover. They cannot throw spears through the corpse. I mean, duh. But even if they tried, it will only hit the corpse. Carrying scavenger corpses alone is better than being empty-handed. You can absorb incoming spears, and once you find a spear, you can feed a lizard the corpse you've been carrying around. You might think that the Dead vultures offer good protection, and you're not entirely wrong. While vultures are big and can cover your whole body, but it's only effective when running away or separating the scavenger forces in two. Jumping over the vulture and throwing spears is risky and can get you killed, so I recommend hiding behind scavenger corpses when attacking and hiding behind vulture corpses when retreating. So yes, maybe you should throw that explosive spear that you've been carrying around the whole time. This chapter will cover anything that can kill, stun, blind, and immobilize the scavengers. I will go from the most obvious to the least obvious of weapons. Starting off with the good old reliable spear. The spear deals 1.25 damage to every creature and can depict back up when thrown. When fighting scavengers, it is the weapon you should use the most besides grenades. Explosive spears might be worse than regular spears, as it can be thrown again and it's not like you already have the potential to one-shot scavengers. Speaking of explosive spears, explosive spears deal 7 damage, capable of one-shotting most lizards and heavily injuring vultures. 
Some creatures, such as red lizards, take less damage than the normal amount. Now, I did say that it's better to use regular spears than explosive ones when fighting scavengers, but I didn't say that explosive spears are useless. You see, explosive spears can send nearby scavengers flying in different directions. It can be useful for separating or injuring them and setting off other explosives. Electric spears. I mean, they just stun enemies, which is useful, I guess, when fighting vultures that really like to escape. It's just a regular spear with an extra zap. I mean, it's not much to say. Rocks. I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's a rock, okay, it's, it can stun for a few seconds, I guess, but I mean, it can turn it into an explosive, I mean, come on, you, you, you know what's a, you know what's a rock, that's all I have to say, really. Grenades, one of the most useful weapons when fighting scavengers in long range scenarios. Sure, you can throw grenades at close range, but keep in mind, you will be stunned and other scavengers can use the opportunity to kill you. Just please don't be like my friend who constantly created bombs out of rocks and shit at Citadel just to take out coalesced speeds. Pain cones. It's rare to see a scavenger have one on him, but even then it can be useful for immobilizing them. You should mostly use the pain cones to immobilize the scavengers and then run away. I don't have much experience with pain cones because, well, they're rare to come by. Flashbangs. Flashbangs? Yes, flashbangs. Flash grenades, whatever you call them. It is a fairly strong weapon against the scavengers. It's a shame that it's not that common to come by. They can blind the scavengers up to 10 seconds. You can tell when they're blinded when their eyes turn grey. In this state, they will not see you and will not throw spears at you, unless you push or touch them. It is useful when there is a group of scavengers blocking the way, or when you're trying to get a good grenade throw but they're constantly moving and messing things up. Mauling. Remember how I mentioned mauling in the previous chapter? Well, here it is. Mauling is more of a quality of life thing than an actual weapon. You can't just fight hordes of scavengers by biting and chewing. To perform a maul, you have to stun a target, grab him, then hold grab. It deals only one damage, and can take out scavengers in two mauls. Maulings? Whatever. It is useful when you are disarmed and are confronted by a scavenger that is also disarmed. You can also execute a maul on smaller targets, like snails, lantern mice, vulture grubs, without stunning them. On to allies. What do I mean by allies? Now, let me explain. Picture this. Every species is its own kingdom. Scavenger kingdom is one of the largest and the Slughead kingdom is one of the smallest. What you've just done was wage war against a small and weak kingdom against a strong one. You need allies. It can range from lizards to vultures. You don't have to feed every lizard you see. A vulture mask to keep them away from eating you is enough. If you see an opportunity to lure that red lizard into a group of scavengers, do it. If you have a vulture grub and you have to pass through a scavenger tall, throw it. Anything that weakens, kills or distracts the scavengers is good. So next time, don't kill that poor white lizard sitting above the death pit. I will divide this chapter into two parts. Skirmishes and scavenger dolls. I'll begin with skirmishes. Skirmishes, or in other words, B M E S E E F T, will have its own subparts offense and defense. Offense is a more risky but fun playstyle, and defense is less risky but less fun playstyle. For newer artificers, I would recommend using the defense playstyle, and only then, after improving, can you slowly shift to the offense playstyle. In the first subpart, I'll be talking about the defense playstyle. The defense playstyle uses more cover and less stunning, usually peeking over corners and throwing spears. Scavenger corpses work just fine for cover. Depending on the situation, using the offense playstyle would be better than its counterpart. Large rooms and open spaces denies the passiveness that the defense playstyle has to offer. For the playstyle, 
I would actually recommend using explosive spears, because a constant onslaught of scavengers isn't very good. It's always easier to take out a group of scavengers when they are moving like a conveyor belt, not like a Mongolian horde. Remember to always clean your line of sight, as piles of scavenger corpses are going to act as meat shields for the scavengers. There's a little tip for when you need to quickly clean your line of sight. You can throw a grenade and it will move all of the corpses out of the way. You can thank me later. That's all for this subpart. Moving on to the offense playstyle. The offense playstyle uses less cover and more stunning. It is a more jumpy playstyle, so to say. This doesn't mean you should spam the explosive jump or the concussive blast as much as possible, you should still have moments of rest where you hide between scavenger corpses trying to cool down. This also doesn't mean you should hunker down and hold your ground, because that is going to be an offense playstyle that turned into a defensive one. If you started with one playstyle, we'll finish fighting with the same playstyle. If you really have to, you can retreat and replan. During the retreat, decide if you should stick with the offense playstyle or switch it up. Again, in some rooms where are, there are long corridors and tight spaces, you should use the defense playstyle. The offense playstyle thrives in large open rooms. For this playstyle, I recommend using flashbangs and regular spears. But if you don't have a flashbang, then a grenade will do just fine. Grenades shouldn't be primarily used as a killing tool, it should be used more of a stun tool. That is all about skirmishes, moving on to the scavenger tools. So why didn't I merge the skirmishes and the scavenger tools into one part? You see, while skirmishes offer scavengers that are all over the place, scavenger tools, on the other hand, really like to crowd them up. The playstyles only apply to some extent. There are way too many scavengers for the offense playstyle, and the defense playstyle can be easily overwhelmed. So what do we do? Well, there is one thing that can easily clear it. One item that can destroy even the biggest of it is a grenade. Come on, we all saw it coming. I don't think there's much explaining to do. Just press the throw button and oh wow, you just killed a whole lot of scammers. congratulations. Okay, but there are alternatives. For example, vultures. They can kill scammers with ease. And if one dies, then hey, you've got yourself some cover to hide behind. Simply causing panic is enough to make scavenger tolls a walk in the park. Well, that's the whole guide. If you want a better experience playing Artificer, you can get the SB Camera Scroll mod, the Kill Feed mod, and if you're feeling really violent, you can get the Blood mod. Thank you for watching, and remember, murder Molingna until they're dead. Also, for some reason, my friend wants to be called to return my video, okay?